Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Stride to Thrive Grant Ceremony. My name is Nuri Philivon, and today I have the pleasure of being your ceremony MC. On behalf of my class and my grant ceremony team, I would like to thank everyone who has taken the time to be here with us today. Over the past few weeks, my class and I have embarked on a very eye-opening and unique experience. In the 15th Stride with Thrive class, we have had the opportunity to make real decisions about how to spend real money to positively impact real people. Today, we have the honor of celebrating not only our class or the nonprofits who will be given our grant today, but to celebrate the, all the hard work that all of our 12 nonprofits do daily. To start, to start our ceremony, I would like to introduce our first speaker, our Dean, Dr. Kathy Farrell. Dr. Kathy Farrell became the James Jr. and Susan Stewart Endowed Dean of the College of Business on December 1, 2017. She served nearly one year as interim dean of the College of Business at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln before becoming the 10th dean of the college. Elected to the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business Board of Directors in 2023, Dean Farrell is an experienced academic and business leader. She formerly served as Associate Dean of the College of Business for four years and Chair of the Department of Finance for two. She also serves on the Board of Directors of Lincoln-based organizations Nelnet, Incorporated, Assurity Incorporated, and Bryan Health. She taught university courses in banking and finance, and after joining the College of Business in 1993, she achieved tenure in 2002 and full professor in 2009. She has been recognized for excellence in teaching and has received various awards from the College of Business and University Distinguished Teaching Awards. Prior to earning her PhD in finance from the University of Georgia, Dean Farrell was an auditor for KPMG Pete Marwick in Baltimore and Atlanta and earned the des designation of certified public accountant. She received her bachelor's degree from Kent State University in Kent, Ohio. Please help me in welcoming Dean Farrell. Thank you. I think they found that in the archives. <laughs> 2017, in fact. Um, I'm honored to be with our students and other Nebraska business community members today as part of this celebration, recognizing all who've made this possible. I want to thank you all for your hard work in this, in this, putting this event together. The students who chose to take this course as an opportunity to make giving back to your community matter, I'm very proud of you. You, had, you made a deliberate effort to participate in this opportunity. The course provides an experience that's more than something you can read in a textbook. We know that the Nebraska business community is where big things are done by amazing people. With an introduction to local nonprofit leaders, you have no doubt met great individuals who helped shine a light on the educational programming services and needs that exist in the Lincoln community. I also hope this influence goes deeper than just one semester. As you reflect on your personal journey, <clears throat> as you reflect on your personal journey from the beginning of the semester, you will likely see how you have many, ex how many experiences will help you better understand the needs of the community. In your life, you're going to be called upon to help, whether it's for immediate help, like the tor tornado recovery, going on right now to the projects that grow over many years. And it's up to you on how you answer those calls. As you remember the challenges and lessons learned, consider how you make, how you make decisions regarding your role as part of a larger community upon graduation. I also want to thank Dr. Jim Croft, the Finance 871 Nonprofit Financial Management class, for assisting our students as they reviewed the nonprofit's Form 990s and annual reports. Of course, this is near and dear to my heart, right, those annual reports. Uh, learning how to evaluate financial health is an important part of this experience. Thank you for sharing your strengths with these future business leaders. I also want to take a moment to recognize longtime community volunteer and philanthropist Rhonda Seacrest. Not only does she provide the financial assistance for the grant, but she's also a favorite guest speaker as she shares her vibrant energy with students during her visits. Her partnership allows us to offer the Leading People and Projects course each semester. Her insight inspires students to be aware of opportunities to serve and learn the ethics and business model of the nonprofit sector. 
I am grateful to be part of this occasion to recognize the 12 local nonprofits who engaged our class this semester, their leaders, and the incredible work happening in our community. It includes Community Action Partnership, EduCare, Family Service Lincoln, Hope, Hope Spoke, Morning Hope, Center for People, Malone Center, Camp Kesham, Northeast Family Center, Friendship Home, Boys and Girls Club of Lincoln, and Teammates. By sharing opportunities to collaborate and demonstrating how innovation helps solve problems, you helped prepare these students and future business world leaders for a world of engagement. I'm confident that because of the experiences you all helped provide our students, these students will be better able to contribute to their communities in the future. We have learned that supporting our neighbor, neighbors is vital to our success as a community. I think we're seeing that firsthand after what we went through on Friday. While we, mo while we must write our own stories, I challenge everyone to continue asking questions about how to collaborate and cultivate innovative relationships to better our community. Engage and share your talents to help strengthen our organizations. Be bold and make your experience matter. Now it is my pleasure to turn things back over to Marie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Farrell, for being here today and for your continued support of Stride with Thrive Lincoln. Next, I am pleased to introduce our amazing professor, Dr. Amber Messersmith. Professor Messersmith has been a lecturer within the management department of the UNL College of Business since the fall of 2015. She started teaching management for 11 her first semester at UNL, and this spring marks the 15th iteration of Stride with Thrive Lincoln. The project name and brand being developed by that first class nearly nine years ago. She currently serves as president of the board of directors for the Hub Central Access Point for young adults, a, lo a local nonprofit hoping to, helping to empower, educate, and employ individuals ages 14 to 24 who are dis disconnected from their families and community. Her past community involvement involves serving on the Pertle Elementary School PTO Board, teaching English courses to those new to the community, volunteering with the Foundation for LPS, F Street Community Center weekend lunches, and our church, Grace Chapel. While she has lived in other places in the Midwest and on the East Coast, she is grateful for the opportunity to be living in her home state of Nebraska with her husband, Jake, and their son, Drew. Without further ado, please give a warm welcome to our professor, Dr. Amber Messersmith. Thank you, Nari. This is a really exciting day, and I just have to give a shout out to the members of this class. Um, they're just an extra special group. Um, but all of you are also extra special because you're here celebrating with us today. We are celebrating the culmination of a process that started this past January. We're also celebrating the work of the 35 members of this class, and as Nari said, the efforts of the nonprofits in our community. Strive to Thrive Lincoln simply would not work without the supportive partners throughout our city. Shortly, I uh, will recognize the 12 nonprofits that we became acquainted with this semester. But I want you to know, Dean Farrell just shared the, that list with you, and you can see them on the side screens too. But I want you to know what being a partner entails. These organizations participated in Zoom interviews. They hosted us for service projects. Uh, they allowed us the chance to come in and conduct site visits. It, w it was an, a remarkable amount of time on their part to help us learn with no guarantee of a grant. None of our 12 grant contenders this semester have ever been selected for a Strive to Thrive grant in a previous semester, but all of them have been finalists multiple times. This means that they have been vetted multiple times by multiple past classes. So again, they knew a grant was not a given, yet they were committed to this experiential philanthropy opportunity. Every one of our 12 organizations is doing meaningful work in our community and is worth your consideration when you engage in your own philanthropic efforts. In fact, here's a plug for Give to Lincoln Day, which coincidentally begins today. It's actually a month-long community-wide giving event that supports local nonprofits. You have until May 30th to give. <laughs> um, the grant ceremony team asked me to share the history of the class, 
as well as its impact, and talk a little bit about this semester in particular. As Nuri mentioned, I began teaching this class in the fall of 2015. Prior to that, the class was taught by Professor Colleen Jones each fall. Over the semesters, the class has continued to change and evolve. For example, the funder of our grants has shifted from a national foundation to a local philanthropist who you've already heard about and you'll hear more from shortly, uh, Rhonda Seacrest. We enjoy having her visit class each semester and we're fortunate to have her with us today. Her generous support enabled us to shift from this being a fall only class to having it every fall and spring. There are countless ways to execute a grant process and across 15 semesters, we've experimented with a variety of approaches. But by the end of every one of those semesters, we've accomplished the very same outcomes. First, gain an awareness and appreciation for the community where we live. Second, learn about leadership and philanthropy potential. And third, recognize the gifts, the opportunities, and the privileges we've been given. We accomplish those through our semester-long pro grant process, Strive to Thrive Lincoln. And after today, this program will have given $150,000 in grant funding to 26 nonprofits here in Lincoln. Yeah, that's, that's significant, 150,000. Our grant process and due diligence are rigorous. The class learned about our 12 grant contenders through researching to prepare white papers interviewing nonprofit leaders, giving and listening to pitches, completing service projects, making site visits, presenting to the class again, analyzing those Form 990s, considering outside evaluations from the uh, Dr. Croft's class, the Nebraska MBA class that Dean Farrell mentioned, and deliberating multiple days as a class. All of this to determine which two organizations will receive a grant today. They've been busy. It has been a busy semester. Alongside the grant process, each member of this class was part of a team that facilitated a different logistical element of our class. Unlike most classes where every student completes the same assignments, I can say that no two individuals' workload this semester looked exactly the same. Our work demanded communication, adaptability, accountability, and commitment because there was far more on the line than just a grade. I hope each person in our class sees how these professional skills tested and refined this semester will serve them in their future careers. Next, I wanna recognize our spring 2024 course liaisons. As Jaina Ghosh and Isha, Isha Kishore make their way to the front, I wanna tell you about them. These two both took the course in previous semesters and have spent this semester as course liaisons. In their roles, they have attended class, served as mentors, sounding boards, and valuable resources. Isha and Jaina, thank you for continuing your Strive to Thrive Lincoln experience this semester. You supported me as well as the class in more ways than you realize. I'm excited for each of you as you graduate in a week and a half. And I'm incredibly proud, not only of your academic accomplishments, but for who each of you are as individuals. And I think there are several people in this room that would agree with me when I say that the world needs more people just like the two of you. I'm just about done. My biggest goal for this course has very little to do with grant recipients, dollar amounts, or class assignments, as important as all of those things are. I hope that ultimately, Every soon-to-be alum of Strive to Thrive Lincoln makes an intentional choice to live a life that includes philanthropy. Though the spring 2024 iteration of Strive to Thrive Lincoln is almost over, the philanthropic journeys of many in this room are just getting started. And that's exciting. And that is how we pay it forward for this meaningful experience entrusted to us. Members of Management 411, I have learned from and been encouraged by you these past 15 weeks. Seeing you grow in empathy and commitment to serving others in your community has truly been a joy for me. And again, if I don't get to see you before you take off today, thank you for every one of you who chose to be with us today. Your presence is a signal of support uh, that you champion the experience of this course. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Noreen.
Thank you, Professor Messersmith. Your guidance and passion for this class have made this experience unreplicable in every way, shape, and form. Thank you for being our biggest supporter throughout this entire journey. Now that you have heard from our dean and our professor, it is now time to welcome my fellow classmates to the podium. The individuals you're about to hear from are our team representatives. Chosen by their respective teams, these six individuals are here to give you an inside look on what we have all accomplished together with their teams this semester. To start, please welcome from our communications team, Dylan Jensen. Hello, everyone. I'm Dylan Jensen and I'll be speaking on behalf of the communications team for Strive to Thrive. I would like to start by thanking all of you for being here and the rest of my classmates for all their hard work this semester, especially my team, Addie, Ethan, Lydia, and Jake. This semester, my team and I have done a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, we're responsible for contacting all 12 nonprofits to obtain their Form 990s and annual reports. And we've worked alongside Dr. Croft's Management 871 class to obtain the condensed reports of their findings. My team was in charge of contacting all of our guest speakers, as well as a thank you for their time. We wrote them thank you letters signed by us and our classmates. In addition, we were the ones who reminded all of our classmates when we had our nonprofit interviews. For me, being part of, a, of Strive to Thrive has had a big impact on me. In high school, I did a lot of work with nonprofits, and when I got to college, all of that changed. For a long time, I was longing for something to do with a purpose, and that would impact others' lives while I was in college. This class gave that to me. Not only did I accomplish that goal, but I learned more about all the nonprofits in the Lincoln area and found ones that spoke to me in a big way that made me want to start volunteering again. If you want to change, you must be look, look beyond the surface. Once again, thank you, and now I'll turn it over to our evaluations team representative. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jade Erickson, and today I am just so thrilled to share the incredible journey of the evaluations team of spring 2024. Our amazing team consisted of Preston Erks, uh, Simon Schumacher, um, Audrey Krieger, uh, Leah Nordstrom and myself included, and Sean B. Nadell. Um, our mission was clear, to assist our class in selecting two non deserving nonprofits for our grants while fostering a spirit of reflection and growth. From crafting insightful questions for our Zoom interviews to designing a comprehensive protocol for site visits, our team left no stone unturned. In ensuring that our classmates had the tools they needed to dive deep into the heart of each nonprofit. We recognized the importance of going beyond basic research and sought to cover the stories and challenges that truly define these organizations. Our efforts didn't stop there. We leveraged technology to streamline the process and ensure fairness in the deliberation process, which lasted two class periods. We guided class discussions through thoughtful analysis and strategic planning, drawing upon a wealth and data to inform our decisions. But our journey wasn't just about making the choices. It was also about reflection. Preparing for Reflection Day, which is upon us next week, we aim to create a space for dialogue and intro introspection, where each class member could share their experiences and chart a course towards continued growth and impact. In, in just, a sh just a few short moments, months, our team has impacted our class and the communities we serve through collaboration, dedication and a commitment to excellence, we demonstrated the power of teamwork and the importance of thoughtful evaluation. As we stand here at the grant ceremony, I'm reminded of the incredible journey we've undertaken together. And I'm filled with gratitude for the opportunity to work alongside such dedicated classmates and faculty members. Thank you and here's the meaningful impact we've made and will continue to make together. Now I'll turn it over to the marketing team. Hello everyone, and thank you for sharing this meaningful day with all of us. My name is Caitlin Molnax, and I have the privilege of representing the Strive to Thrive marketing team today. Over this past semester, the five of us, Madison, Jamie, V, Allison, and myself, have carried out the behind the scenes work and thought that went into the Strive to Thrive social media accounts, as well as the newsletters. 
After setting a posting schedule and assigning areas of specialty at the beginning of the semester, our weekly contributions to the class included posting three times a week to our Instagram and Facebook accounts. These included team introductions, service project highlights, guest speaker features, behind the scenes of our site visits, and more. Each post involved capturing and collecting media from our class members and turning them into meaningful graphics using Canva, composing descriptions, writing copy, and interacting with nonprofit accounts. Being able to put our efforts into representing Stride to Thrive well and increasing its presence both in the Lincoln community and around campus was a privilege that we did not take lightly and a really special opportunity, allowing us to take others along, including many of you, on our journey as we work through the grant process as a class. What I valued about working with this group was our ability to grow as a team, make adjustments, apply feedback, and provide each other with constructive criticism criticism in order to improve our processes. This experience really reinforced to me how much of a difference it makes when working with those who have common passions. It's a game changer working with people who have a true desire to do well and a growth mindset. It's a special thing to see and appreciate the unique strengths of every individual, and our class as a whole was an absolutely wonderful illustration of putting that into fruition. Thank you, and I'll now pass it over to our service projects team. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, everyone. My name is Blake Sayers, and I have the honor of representing the Strive to Thrive Service Projects team. The Service Projects team, consisting of Kieran, Alec, Josen, Ramon, Eric, and myself, were responsible for all of the scheduling, travel, coordination, and communication that went into allowing our class to volunteer for an NPO, potentially interacting with clients served by the organization, as well as some of the employees that help continue its mission. Thank you, thanks to the hard work and communications of each member of the Service Projects team and the guidance of our amazing course liaison, Jana Gose, um, we were able to ensure that each project was completed and that each member reflected on their experiences for our deliberations. Every project was a meaningful opportunity that allowed each student to see the inner cogs of the contending nonprofit and to observe all the work that goes into providing for their clients Service project groups also met the in incredible teams that each organization has assembled to continue their invaluable work in the community that they serve. The diligent planning and coordination undertaken by our team and the directors at each organization ensured that every service project was not only fulfilling for our classmates, but also impactful for the, non for the nonprofit organizations that we partnered with. During our selection process, each member of the team was given an opportunity to share what their groups had learned from their time at each organization, what they did, what they saw, and what they each have taken with them from each service project that they have led, as well as any photos they took of the work that they did and the people that they serve. Working with the service projects team was an amazing opportunity and experience from the opportunity to volunteer at a nonprofit in my community, to be a part of the Strive to Thrive Lincoln selection process, and as well as to be a part of such a hardworking group of people. While the steps of this selection process were divided into separate groups and compartmentalized, it was collaboration of every member of the Management 411 class that made it possible, and I'm grateful for the chance to be a part of it. Now please help me welcome our site visits team representative. Thank you so much, Blake. Hello everyone, my name is Sandy Streeter and I am here to represent the Strive to Thrive site visit team. We are Claire, Caden, Mia, Tyler, Ruman, and our accountability manager, Cassie. As we gather here today to celebrate the culmination of our efforts, I'm honored to reflect on our journey as a site visit team. Our role was pivotal in shaping the outcomes of today's events as we were tasked with coordinating and organizing the site visits for our entire class. As the site visit coordinators, we undertook a multifaceted approach to fulfill our responsibilities with precision and effectiveness. This encompassed reaching out to nonprofit organizations to secure and coordinate site visits, orchestrating the assembly of site visit teams for our class members, and guiding the logistics of each site visit to ensure that our classmates had meaningful opportunities to engage directly with these incredible organizations. Through these efforts, we aim to gather firsthand experiences that would deepen our understanding of the important work 
being done by these nonprofits by directly witnessing their impact. One of the highlights of this journey has been the cohesion within all of the teams. I've witnessed firsthand how we've seamlessly blended our individual strengths, fostering an environment where every voice is heard and valued. Working with this team has been an invaluable learning experience for everyone. We've all honed our multitasking abilities while ensuring effective communication channels among everyone. Engaging in discussions with diverse perspectives has broadened our understanding and enriched our problem-solving skills. Moreover, amidst the seriousness of our tasks, our team fostered moments of lightheartedness and camaraderie, providing much-needed relief during sometimes stressful times. In conclusion, this journey has not only deepened our understanding of nonprofit organizations, but also facilitated great personal growth. I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with such a dedicated and supportive group of people. Together, we laid the foundation for groundwork for informed decision making in our grant deliberations. Thank you, and last but not least, I'd like to welcome Avery from the grant ceremony team. Thank you. Hi, I'm Avery Calvota, and I'm honored to be representing the grant ceremony team. Nari, Divine, Joe, Thea, Norma, and I, as a team, were tasked with organizing one of the most important days of the semester today. With teamwork, creativity, and weekly meetings, our team carefully organized and executed everything under the sun for this occasion. From the big things like catering, setting up the tables, writing the script, organizing the slideshow you see around you, to the little things like getting their certificates ordered, Invites sent out and tables decorated. We worked hard to show our gratitude and thanks to all the nonprofits who participated and strived to thrive this semester. I can proudly say that my team and I created memories in this room that none of us will forget, which is what I have loved most about Strive to Thrive, knowing that I've gained memories, skills, and connections that will stick with me throughout the rest of my life. Working with not only the grant ceremony team, but all the other teams formed throughout the semester has been the best experience, which is very rare to say about group projects in college. I can confidently say that I have learned leadership, organization, time management, and many other skills from my classmates. The grant ceremony team was made up of six completely different individual individuals, all with different strengths and weaknesses. And it was truly amazing to see how each individual crafted differently could form one of the strongest teams I've ever been a part of. The start of the semester feels like it was just yesterday and looking back at the hard work that we all put in is really special. It saddens me to know that our class is almost over, but the, seeing the accomplishments and skills that we've gained and the friendships formed makes it a little better. In conclusion, I would like to thank the grant ceremony team and everyone in this class for making it a memorable semester. Thank you so much to our team representatives. Can we give them another round of applause, please? Dylan, Jade, Caitlin, Blake, Sandy, and Avery. Thank you so much for speaking on behalf of your teams and for all of your hard work. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Allison Calvota and Jason Toomey to announce our first grant recipient. Although I am fortunate and have never been significantly impacted by the loss of a significant individual in my life, I've seen the impacts it's had on individuals who have directly influenced me and have changed the trajectory of our lives. After viewing multiple times with Morning Hope, I felt unified with their mission, the lasting impact they left on the members of the Lincoln community for being a beacon of hope for many lives in the past and many more in the future, ensuring that no one has to grieve alone. In every conversation I had with Tara and Carly, demonstrating their passion for building individuals into something greater than loss they have endured. During my site visit at Morning Hope, I was fortunate to witness how their services have and continue to make a remarkable impact on the Lincoln community. Touring the facility and observing how each room had been so thoughtfully crafted to guide individuals through the grieving process was truly unforgettable. I remember leaving Morning Hope that day wishing that the entire Strive to Thrive class could have shared this experience with me 
to witness firsthand how the services and programs deliver, deliver support and care to the families they serve. However, I understand that it takes much more than just a physical space to ensure the, to ensure the success of a nonprofit. While listening to Tara and Carly speak on behalf of their entire staff, it was clear that their team's dedication and passion for this cause is what truly makes Morning Hope prosper. I want to thank you both for the experience that I had during my site visit. Sorry. Through your insights, I now understand how significant it is to have accessible grief services like yours in our community. I'm confident that this grant will further support Morning Hope and its mission to assist individuals before and after a loss. And I look forward to witnessing your ongoing growth and expansion in the years ahead. Congratulations, Morning Hope, on being one of our Strive to Thrive grant recipients. Receiving the grant on behalf of Morning Hope is Tara Gregg. Tara has been at Morning Hope for just over a year. Before that, she spent a decade writing grants for universities. At Morning Hope, she oversees the grant activity and fundraising in collaboration with the development team, Carly and Rachel. Please welcome Tara to the podium. Hello, and what a pleasure it is to be here with y'all today. Thank you to everyone involved in the Strive to Thrive course. Of course, the fabulous students. It's so great to see your faces again today. And we also want to thank Professor Messersmith, Rhonda Seacrest, and Dean Farrell, and the College of Business. Strive to Thrive is a powerful learning experience, and Morning Hope has participated for several years um, because we are aware of how it helps to cultivate a love of service and a love of philanthropy, and our hope is that that inspires you all to engage with nonprofits throughout your lives, whether that's as a volunteer, a board member, maybe a founder, um, or a donor or community advocate. There's so many ways to stay engaged, and we really encourage you all to do that. As many of you know, Morning Hope exists to companion children, adults, and families before and after a death loss. In 1994, Morning Hope's founder, Pam Deneen, was a school counselor. She served on the crisis response team. After working closely with a middle school student who was struggling to navigate life after a death loss, she recognized that as a community, we could do more to help. So Pam envisioned a place where kids could find someone who understood what it was like to have a parent or a sibling die, and she envisioned a safe place where they could share these big, heavy emotions and learn to comfort and companion each other through their grief. And so in September of 1994, she hosted the first peer support group for nine middle school students here in town. 30 years later, Morning Hope has served more than 15,000 grieving hearts here in our community, helping them through some of the hardest moments in their lives. Over these three decades, our services have expanded beyond that initial group to include individual and family counseling in English and in Spanish, support groups for specific types of loss, single day grief support events, overnight grief camps, and community education. And through it all, we have never charged a fee for any of our grief support or counseling services. So we truly depend on the generosity of the Lincoln community. And that's why it's so meaningful to us that you have selected us for a grant this year. And we're choosing to designate the funds to Camp Erin. Uh, camp Erin is our overnight grief camp that takes place every September. 
And at camp, we have roughly 60 kids and teens that come together uh, for intentional grief support within a traditional camp environment. One of the special activities at camp is creating a luminary to honor the person that, that has died. And we have a special ceremony where each person gets to go up and light their luminary and share the name of the person that they're, they are there remembering. And it's truly incredible to witness how brave and compassionate these young kids and teens are with each other. Camp Erin costs about $30,000 each year and requires more than 50 volunteers. And this grant will go a long way towards making camp happen this fall and to helping ensure that it stays free for everyone. Um, we are still looking for volunteers, <laughs> so um, I'm looking at all of you students out there. Um, we would love to have you as part of Camp Erin, so please get in touch with us if you'd like to do that. And thank you again. We are so grateful for your support. Thank you, Tara. For your remarks, once again, congratulations. My name is Joseph Watson. And I'm Eric Shinest. And we are honored to introduce our next grant recipient. They are better known as Bones and Rocket at camp. Every camper and camp counselor has a unique camp name to help with confidentiality and, and to allow kids to take on a second alias. It also adds to the fun environment. I helped out with Friends and Family Day for my service project. Uh, it's an introductory day where kids and parents can learn about the organization and meet the counselors before deciding to send their kids away to summer camp. Uh, but before we started, I needed my own camp name, so everyone formed a naming circle around me and I started to list off things I liked and enjoyed doing. I'm currently taking a scuba diving class here at UNL and one of the campers shouted out, scuba! So I thought that was a great name, and for the remainder of the day, my name was no longer Eric, but now, but then Scuba. The highlight of my service project was when we played a game of four-on-four, -four, two-hand touch football. My team, the Cheetahs, beat the Spirits in a last play, Hail Mary. Founded in 2000 and nationally expanded in 2003 across the United States, Camp Kessim has become a beacon of hope and joy, providing children a haven away from the difficult toll cancer takes on families. Today, we are thrilled to announce that Camp Kessim has also been selected as one of our Strive to Thrive grant recipients. We hope this grant will support their ongoing efforts to offer these courageous children a place to heal, connect, and simply be kids. Camp Kessim and those who dedicate their time to volunteer with them work diligently to enrich and provide safety to those whose families face the immense challenges of cancer. With that being said, we would like to invite Bones, also known as Kirsten, and Rocket, also known as Ro Rohan, co-directors of Co Camp Kessim, at the University of Nebraska to the podium. Sorry, we're not as prepared with a piece of paper. <laughs> College kids. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Kirsten, but in the Kessem world, I am more formally known as Bones. And I'm Rohan, better known as Rocket. And we're the co-directors for Camp Kessem's chapter based right out of here at UNL. Kesem is Hebrew for magic, and our organization is nothing short of just that. We're an organization aimed towards serving children whose parents have or had cancer, ensuring that no child goes through that fight alone. Kesem is the largest provider of support services to this underserved population in the US. Our chapter is proud to currently serve 60 children right here in Nebraska. 
and hopes to expand that number in the near future. Throughout the year, we provide them with a support system of passionate college students who volunteer their time as counselors, as well as connecting them with other children who understand what each other are going through. This $5,000 grant will directly go towards our camp this summer, taking place at the end of May. All of our services are completely free, not, and that includes our camp as well. Now this is no ordinary summer camp. Like I said, Kesem is Hebrew for magic. This camp is a place where our kiddos can step away from the stresses of their home situation and allow them to just be a kid. The $5,000 we receive will go towards activities at camp, like paying for a sound booth for the talent show, where kids feel empowered and get to show off all of their talents. And for paying for the friendship bracelet string that is used for all the new and existing friendships made at camp, or paying for all the paint and shaving cream for Messy Olympics, which is the most <laughs> favorite activity at camp. But most of all, it'll help go towards creating the magic of Camp Kesem. Couple of thank yous. Thank you to Addie and her team who first interviewed us and allowed us to share some special moments in Kesem. It was a real tearjerker. You had to be there. Thank you to Scuba, Maverick, and Red, oh, I mean, Eric, Theo, and Mia, for their willingness to volunteer with us and our kids on a weekend. Y'all jumped right in, and the kids loved having you. Next, thank you to Caden and his team for allocating time to get to know us and Kesem on a deeper level during the site visit. Thank you to Nuri and the ceremony team for putting this on for us today. And lastly, thank you to the entire Strive to, Strive to Thrive team for the opportunity to share our mission with you. We wouldn't have this without y'all. It is a great honor to be this year's grant recipient for the Strive to Thrive grant. And we would love to express our deepest gratitude to towards Strive to Thrive and all of the kind students who granted us the opportunity to be part of this year's grant process. Thank you for believing in our mission at Camp Kesem UNL to ensure that every kid that is affected by a parent's cancer can find support, strength, and a sense of belonging at camp. Thank you. Thank you so much to Morning Hope and Camp Kesem for all that you do for our Lincoln community. We cannot wait to witness the evolution of change from your contributions to our community. This process would not have been possible without the generous contributions of Ms. Rhonda Seacrest, who has actively supported multiple causes in Lincoln and across the state of Nebraska for many years. Ms. Seacrest understands that philanthropy means giving of your time and sharing your insights as well. Just a partial list of the way she currently serves are as follows. Past president of the LEAD Center Advisory Board, trustee of the University of Nebraska Foundation, and a board member for Lincoln City Libraries. She is also a member of the Link Nebraska Cultural Endowment Advisory Council. In addition to her gifts that have enabled Strive to Thrive Lincoln to be offered every semester and ensured future semesters as well, she has also given to multiple other areas of the university, including gifts to the Lead Center that have enabled the venue to bring in world renowned artists, symphonies, and dance companies. She and her late husband, Jim, have also given to the College of Business, College of Journalism and Mass Communications, Sheldon Museum of Art, Nebraska Public Media, and the Hicks and Lead College of Fine and Performing Arts. The year after her husband passed away, Jim Seacrest was awarded the College of Business Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017. She ser he served as chairman of the Western Publishing Company, which owns several newspapers in Western Nebraska. Ms. Seacrest was recognized in 2017 with the Sheldon Award, which is given every other year by the Sheldon Museum of Art to a benefactor who has significantly impacted the museum. Last spring, she was officially designated Nebraskan of the Year by the downtown, Lincoln Downtown Rotary Club 14, a well-known service group of nearly 300 Lincoln business and community leaders. Now, please give a warm welcome to Ms. Rhonda Seacrest. Hello, I'm happy to be with you this afternoon. Regardless of what else I'm going to say today, I want you to know that this isn't about me and it's not about anything else. It's about you and the wonderful job that you're doing and that you will do going forward. 
So anyway, it's wonderful to be here with you today. I'm particularly grateful to you for taking the Strive to Thrive class. That choice speaks volumes about you. It plainly says that you recognize that there is human suffering that needs to be addressed and you have chosen to pursue a course of study that will address that and create solutions. So thank you for that. A person I greatly admired once told me that it doesn't make any difference how much money you have or the extent of your collection of art and antiques or how brilliant your children. I could go on with that list. But when it comes right down to it, the only thing that really matters is how we treat each other. And those are the words that I try to live by. People like me, we donate money, we give time, but the gift that each of you is going to give by your decision to enroll in the Strive to Thrive class, taking lessons that you have learned into the private and public sectors for literally decades to come is more valuable than anything that I or anyone would ever give by way of financial contribution. So I thank you again for what you're doing and what you, are willing, what you will do and for giving me the opportunity to work with you. Thank you, Ms. Seacrest, for being here with us today. On behalf of my class, I would like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. This class, beyond its teachings, has allowed us to grow tremendously as leaders and civil servants in this beautiful community. To wrap up our time here today, I would like to invite Ethan Percade to the podium. Ethan was nominated by our class to speak on behalf of us on this journey we have accomplished together. Due to his thoughtfulness and engaged presence throughout our entire semester, we have chosen him as our class representative. Without further ado, please welcome Ethan to the podium. Thank you everyone for being here. So when I think of philanthropy and giving back to the community that's been such a part of my own successes, I think of volunteering at a soup kitchen, preparing meals for refugees in distant countries, or even just giving someone on the street a few dollars. When starting this class in January, I really didn't know what to expect. I had heard nothing but great things from my peers who had taken in the past, but I was eager to find things out for myself. I didn't take long for me to figure out that there is so much more to philanthropy than just giving money or donating your time for a couple of hours. Through my interactions with the MPOs, or nonprofit organizations, this semester, I have been able to broaden my perspective of what an MPO is and what they do for a community like Lincoln, Nebraska. MPOs may provide critically needed resources, they may help those who are hungry have things to eat, and they may give shelter to those who have none. They do all these fantastic things, but to me, these actions, the organizations, all culminate to do something much more impactful. They help us strive to create a, com a community where we lift each other when others are downtrodden, and they help find ways to help those who are struggling in the most specific of ways. I believe that this cultural shift that MPOs are creating, not just in Lincoln, but throughout the nation, is something that betters humanity one single day, one single act of time, all for the better. In this drive to help our community thrive, my classmates and I have been generously gifted the opportunity to gift two, or two $5,000 grants. This class has taught me a whole lot more than what MPOs are and what philanthropy is. It has taught me how to be a better human being through recognizing, acting on, and ultimately finding ways to critically think about the issues our community faces and creative ways to solve them. One MPO that resonated with me was EduCare. For context, in our class, as you guys know, we go on site visits and service projects to, to interact hands-on with MPOs across Lincoln. I went to EduCare with my site visit group and I discovered a whole new perspective, one I didn't even realize, that exists in our community. By talking through the challenges low-income families face with affordable, quality childcare and even adult parenting skills with EduCare staff, I was exposed to a struggle I didn't even realize I would be as passionate about. This memory of interacting with the staff and getting to see the children in EduCare and not, and not, just, get to not just daycare, but a whole educational curriculum was one that I will always remember. As we leave our grant ceremony here today, I would like to encourage you to Google search some nonprofits in the communities you live in and try to find a way to get involved. Who knows, you might discover something you never imagined and impact someone's life in a way more than anyone could ever believe. Thank you, everybody. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with my class and I today to celebrate this incredible milestone together. Congratulations once again to our grant recipients, Morning Hope and Camp Kesem, and a big thank you to all the nonprofits who have been a part of this process with us over the past semester. Boys and Girls Club of Lincoln, Camp Kesem, Center for People, Community Action Partnership of Lancaster and Saunders Counties, Educare Lincoln, Family Service Lincoln, Friendship Home, Hope Spoke, Malone Center, Morning Hope, Northeast Family Center, and Teammates. 
Thank you all for being here. Please take food as you exit and wave down our wonderful, wonderful photographer, Atali, if you'd like any pictures to be taken. And we hope to see you again in the fall. Thank you so much.